All right, so in today's video, I wanna go over React error boundaries and how they can help you catch errors in your application. So I'm not gonna walk through building the actual error boundary itself. I'll show you, I have a default one set up, but I wanna go over kind of like a, a struggle I had with bound, error boundaries and how, was it, did it quit or not? Uh, I don't think it, it quit. No, it didn't quit, okay, I think we're still going. And, uh, <clears throat> So, and I just want to touch on one point specifically where I got stuck in how boundaries work. So let's just start off and see what our component looks like for an error boundary. So the first thing you have to know is that uh, your error boundary class has to be a class. It can't be a function component. So I have a class called error catcher. It extends the React component class. It's pretty straightforward. We have some state. Uh, specifically, we're just looking at the error key here. And then we have our render method down below where if there's an error, we're gonna render out this simple div. And otherwise, if there's no error, we're just gonna render whatever children were passed to the error catcher. And then the component did catch method, which I skipped over, is a lifecycle hook. And what it does is whenever an error, and this part is important, in the tree beneath the error catcher occurs, okay, so a, a child of the error catcher throws an error, this, Component to catch lifecycle hook will be called, and then we'll set our state to true, which will trigger a re-render, which will then render this div. So the part there that I kind of emphasized was the children of the error catcher. Okay, so if we go into our app.js, I just want to show you that I am rendering out this error catcher component as my top level component in my application. Okay, so it gets mounted directly to my app element. Then I go into my layout. Uh, component, which is, it, for the sake of this video, it's just, it's displayed on every page, it's used everywhere. And right now on the left, you can see I can refresh, everything loads fine. So now if I make an error occur by, you know, providing a variable that doesn't exist, so sidebar open one doesn't exist, I'm going to save that, refresh on the left, and you can see in our console, we have an uncaught reference error, sidebar open one is not defined. And then you can see an error has occurred is our div, which was rendered by our error catcher, okay? And you can also see that I'm logging out, caught an error with the error info, and that is visible here. So the part that I got caught up on was what I tried to do initially was change my error catcher code such that when I was testing this, I put my undefined variable or my error, whatever it was, directly in the error catcher, and it's hard to explain it because it's a child, but it's not a child component. It's just child elements, I guess, of the error catcher, and this doesn't work. So now if I go back, I'm gonna fix layout so it's actually correct. And then I have my error here. For like 20 minutes I spent, I thought that this would trigger my error because technically it's a child, you know, it's a children of the error catcher. However, it has to be a child component that part is very key. It has to be in the tree as a React component. So instead, I save, I refresh on the left, and boom, our app has failed. We've got white screen, which is like the typical React has exploded. And then we have an undefined variable, is not defined error, and we don't have our catch, and we don't have our div that says an error has occurred. So again, this got me caught up for a while. The Basically, the key, to, the key to this is have an error catcher class and then have a component as a single child beneath error catcher, right? So that's what I've done here. I have error catcher and then inertia app and then everything is inside inertia app. So that way, if anything inside inertia app um, throws an error, error catcher will catch it. So that's error boundaries, pretty hot overview. Um, check out the React docs and actually learn about them. But just remember that it has to be a child component. It could be a class or function component as a child, but it has to be a child component of error catcher. You can't just render a whole bunch of stuff here and expect error catcher to catch it. All right, so that's been it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter at Owen Conti, and check out my blog on OC Media. I'll link it to you in the description below, but I'll have a text version of this post, of this video up and ready to go. All right, I'll catch you later.